Good morning, boys and girls. I want to tell you the story today of Mr. Quiet, as told by Roger Hardgraves. Now, Mr. Quiet, he lived a very quiet life. He lived in a tiny little cottage in the middle of a wood. The middle of the wood was in the middle of a country called Loudland. And everything and everyone in Loudland was very loud indeed. They made a lot of noise. And Mr. Quiet, he really didn't like a lot of noise. The dogs, they barked very loudly. Woof, woof, woof. The people, when they met you in the street, they didn't speak softly one to another. They shouted. So it would be, hello, Mr. McLaughlin. They didn't even close their doors gently. They banged them shut with a bang, bang. And Mr. Quiet, he wanted a peaceable and quiet life. He hated all this noise, so he spent as much time as he could inside his little cottage. But he couldn't stay there all the time, for sometimes he had to go shopping. For example, whenever he went into the grocer's, he asked when the grocer bellowed at him, What would you like? A box of cornflakes, please. Speak up, man, I can't hear you, bellowed the grocer. A box of cornflakes, please. I can't hear you. Speak up, ma'am. Next, please. So he had to leave the shop, very frustrated. Then he went into the butcher's. What can I get for you today? I would like some bacon, some sausages, and some minced steak. Speak up, ma'am. I can't hear you. Bellowed the butcher. And this happened two or three times. So Mr. Quiet, he fled from the shop. He was very frustrated. And he went home. And he was sitting in his favorite chair and he thought, I'm going to have to try again tomorrow. And that's exactly what he did do. He, he tried again tomorrow. He went to the grocers. He went to the greengrocers. He went to the butchers. He went to the milkman. And it was the same thing. He fled empty-handed because they bellowed and shouted. They couldn't hear Mr. Quiet, what he actually was asking for. So he came home without anything. Here he is sitting in his favorite chair and he's depressed. He's at the point of despair, boys and girls. He's wondering, what on earth am I going to do? And all of a sudden he can hear footsteps in his path. And there's a big bang, bang, bang at the door. He jumps to the chair. He, he's frightened. Who's that? He hears the letterbox rattling and he hears back down the path. So he sits for a while. Now he is frightened. And he sits until he can hear nothing. And then he goes to the front door. And you know, inside his hallway, there was a letter. And it was addressed to him. A letter addressed to me. I, I, I don't get letters. This was the first letter he'd had in a long time. So he brought it in. He had made some tea to himself. And he was sipping the tea. And he opened up the uh, envelope. And what was inside? But it was an invite from Mr. Happy. And it was an invite from Mr. Happy to come to Mr. Happy's house and spend some time with him. So do you know what Mr. Quiet did, boys and girls? He went upstairs very quickly. He got a suitcase. He put some things together. And very, very soon, he was tap, tap, tapping at Mr. Happy's door. Now, Mr. Happy lived in Happy Land. Mr. Happy opened the door. Lovely to see you, Mr. Quiet. Please come in. And remember, Mr. Happy had a big, big, bright smile. So in Mr. Quiet came. They had tea together. Mr. Quiet ate so much his belly was sore. Because remember, he was very hungry. And he didn't have cornflakes for his breakfast. Or he didn't have any meat for his dinner. Or for his tea in the evening time. They discussed Mr. Quiet's problem. Mm, Mr. Happy says, that's a real problem. But I tell you what we're going to do. I have a plan. And here's the plan. Mr. Quiet, you're going to leave Loudland and you're going to sell your little cottage there and you're going to come and live in Happy Land and I will help you to find a house. Better than that, I'm going to help you to find a job. A job, Mr. Quiet said. I don't get on very well doing jobs because I'm so quiet. I have the perfect job for you. There was one advertised a few days ago and it's for a librarian in Happy Lending Library. 
And in the library, you have to be very quiet. You have to whisper. One time, boys and girls, I was down in the Maclay Library in Queen's University, and I was meeting my daughter, Miriam Rose, there, and I was speaking to some other Christians from different Free Presbyterian churches. There may have been some other girls, and I'm speaking very loudly and saying, it's really good to see you girls. How are you getting on? And this lady, she came up and said, Sir, you be quiet, because if you don't, I'm going to ask you, ask you to leave. Mr. Quiet, he loved working in Happy Landing Library. And one evening, having moved from Loudland to Happy Land, settled in his new house, thinking how wonderful it was to a new job, he came out of the library, and this is what he did. Ha, ha, ha! He was happy living in Happy Land, and he let a very, very loud laugh out of him. Now, that's the story of Mr. Quiet, as told by Roger Hardgraves. Could I tell you, boys and girls, that there's 46 references in the Bible to quiet and to be of a contented and a quiet spirit. I want us to think of three things using the word quiet today. I want you to be a quiet type. Because you know what the Bible tells us? To study to be quiet and to do your own business and work with your own hands as we have commanded you. And that's what 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11 says. Study to be quiet. What does that mean? Well, the word study means to have a, a plan or, or to, to have it as your life's goal or, or to, to be ambitious, to have a quiet spirit. And it means that you're not being controlled by your temper. You're not giving over to pride and envy. You're not a fighter. You're not a brawler. You're, 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 you're thinking about the well-being of others. And before you speak and communicate, before you um, say anything, you're thinking about your character and you're thinking about your conduct. You know, the Bible talks about a meek and, and a, 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 a quiet spirit is, is like a, a great ornament in the sight of God. The ornament of a, a, a meek and quiet spirit is of great price in the sight of God. And we're familiar with ornaments. And, and yet, boys and girls, here's one of the best. You could choose, by the grace and help of God, to be a quiet type. There's a difference between being quiet and being noisy. What type of you? Have you got the ornament of a quick and mad, meek and quiet spirit about you? Can I tell you something else? Not only to be a quiet type, but to have a quiet time. You know, boys and girls, if you're a Christian and you love the Lord Jesus, then you need to have a set time every day to, to speak to God in prayer. The psalmist prayed in the morning, he prayed at noon, and he prayed at the evening. And it's good to have a set time for prayer. And let's remember the Bible tells us, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and shut thy door, and pray to thy father in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. And boys and girls, it's a wonderful thing to every day set aside time to go and talk to God. I learned a little thing many, many years ago, and it was this. I met God in the morning when the day was at its best. His presence came like sunrise, a glory to my breast. All day long his presence lingered. All day long he talked with me, and we sailed in perfect calmness or a very troubled sea. You see, part of having a quiet time is having a secret place to get alone with God, to meet with him, and talk to God in prayer, and tell God about your problems, tell God about how you feel, what you're thinking, tell God about your needs, and ask God for his help, and ask God for his grace. But there's something else about having a quiet time, and it's letting God speak to you. And how does God speak to us today? Oh, not in visions and dreams uh, in olden times. He speaks to us now out of the Bible. And that's why it's important to read the Bible. Do you have a set time to read the Bible every day? Do you have a little reading plan? It's not only good enough to read the Bible, but, but you have to meditate on the scriptures that you're reading. So you have to think upon them. And you have to ask yourself, what's this passage teaching me about God? What does it teach me about Christ, about sin, about salvation, about the Holy Spirit? What does it teach me about my soul? What's it teaching me about my character and my, my conduct and my behavior? Remember, if you choose to be a quiet type, 
then you will also want to have a quiet time and let God speak to you out of his word. But not only do you meditate on the scriptures, you do what the scriptures tell you. The Bible says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. And it's very important that you not only read God's word and meditate upon it, but you, but you apply it in your life and you allow the word of God to be lived out so that men can see and they may not read their Bible, but they can read you in your life. So it's important that you have a, a quiet time. Could I tell you something else? It's not only to be a quiet type and have a quiet time, but it's to pass the quiet test. Do you know that the Bible tells us in the book of Lamentations that It is good for a man to have hope and to quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 23. You think of a man sitting before God and he's not arguing with God. He's accepting who God is. He's accepting the fact that he's a sinner. He's accepting the fact that he's not right with God in himself and he needs to receive Jesus Christ by faith and he has nothing to say. Remember, of course, our Lord Jesus Christ, he set the great example because the Bible says when he faced the cross, he was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shears is silent, so he openeth not his mouth. The Lord Jesus had nothing to say. He didn't argue or fight with those who were trying to put him to death on the cross. He accepted the will of God because remember, he was the lamb of God who came in to sacrifice himself by a once and for all offering of himself unto God that he might become our savior. And you see, the person who's the truly Mr. Quiet person, he is the quiet type because he possesses the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is of great price in the sight of God. He has a daily quiet time, because he's a Christian, and he wants to talk to God, and he wants God to speak to him, but he also passes the quiet test. He doesn't argue with God. Remember, the Bible says, the fool have said in his heart there is no God, but he's not foolish. He doesn't say there's no God. He, he, he doesn't say, as fools do, who make a mock at sin, he accepts that he's a sinner. He accepts that he got a soul. He accepts that he needs to be saved. And he asks the Lord Jesus Christ to be his Lord and his Savior. And that's what it means to pass the quiet test, to quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. And I want to ask you, have you done that? Will you do that today if you haven't? And I trust and pray that the Lord will teach all of us to be quiet. Do you know the Bible teaches us that we're to have a guard upon our mouth. And we have got lips and we've got teeth to guard our tongue because oftentimes it slips out. And also remember, we have got two ears and I've just been told off this week that I should listen more than I talk. And you know, that's a very good lesson to learn. And it's all about learning to be like a Mr. Quiet, but sitting quietly before God, letting God speak to us and us speak to him wearing the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. And I trust and pray that that will be true of you as you learn that in your life. God bless and thanks for listening.